Welcome to my second video in my Transformer Concepts series. In the first video, I took 500 feet of number 12 wire, stretched it out across a big lawn, applied 120 volts across it, and we saw the current, more than 100 amps, flow on that. And that's because we were largely just dealing with the resistance of the wire. But when we had it in the coil, applied the same 120 volts, only 30 amps flowed. Did a little Ohm's law. We came up that there must be four ohms of total opposition, impedance, if you will, that's made up of the ohms from resistance and the ohms from the inductive reactants, 90 degrees from each other. So I did Pythagoras backwards to figure out what this was. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Oh, and we also know what the inductive reactance is, right? It's that magnetic field around each wire working together and making it stronger so that the voltage induced by that is directly opposing the applied voltage. So it's pushing back, pushing back on the applied voltage. Let's plug it in. And here we have uh, a little over 28 amps flowing. Well, that's close enough for what we're going to demonstrate today. Might be some voltage drop in the building right now. And it, since this is partially about the core, let's put something in the middle. I got some copper wires here. Let's put that in. Nothing happens. It's not magnetic. Well, let's put this in here. Drops it down to 20 and a half. We went from 28 something down to less than 21. Pull it out. 27, 28. Put it in. Less than 21. I lost seven and a half amps just by putting this metal in here. What's going on? Well, the magnetic flux lines will go through the air around this wire, but they travel so much better in a, a ferrous material. It just means an iron-based material. And so when you have that there, those flux lines, it's like a special highway for the flux lines, and they can travel much better. Concentrate that magnetic field induce even more back voltage, CEMF, against the applied, and therefore reduce the current. If there's even less current here, that would imply more opposition, and the resistance stayed the same, so it has to be more inductive reactants, a taller, steeper triangle, getting made up more and more by the inductance. The resistance is playing a smaller part in it. So let's um, set this aside for a minute. It's getting a little warm. And uh, let's look at the transformer that I uh, built, or at least the primary that I have here. We'll put uh, a loop of wire through here and see what we can stretch that over there so you can see it. And, um, and I'll plug it in. Uh, 1.97 amps. Just under, let's just call it two amps. Two amps versus 20 some. Well. A few things going on here, but what I'll point out today is that the core here goes through the middle, wraps all the way around here. So there's kind of like a nice highway for the uh, lines of flux to go through it. Plus I've got three of these all working together to concentrate that magnetic field. The other thing I'll show you is this. Whoa, whoa, that's, uh, like I said earlier, that's hot. And uh, it's just a piece of rebar I used. Why did it get so hot? Well, it's, it's just a lump of metal, and there's these little eddy currents that fly around in there, and they, part of what they do is make this hot, and it's not as efficient. It still worked, right? It made the principle, made the point we're trying to, but what did I use here? Well, I ha hacked up an old microwave transformer and then taped it all, to, stuck it together, taped it all up, um, and here's a section of what that looked like. I don't know if you can see all these individual little strips on there. I got some here that I, that I took apart, right? It's all these little layers. And what we call them is laminations, kind of like layers of laminated wood. And what's interesting is each layer is coated with um, an insulating material to isolate or insulate each lamination from the next. So the eddy currents cannot flow this way. So this helps the lines of flux travel freely. And it's also a more permeable metal. What that basically means is 
down at the molecular level, the little positives and negatives, the dipoles, can flip back and forward more easily. Magnetize this way, lose their magnetism, magnetize the other way. So they flip back and forward real easily. Engineers get excited about that stuff. But they put it in there, it makes the transformers uh, work better, all right, more efficiently. Um, what else do I, oh, let's look at this. So this is all together now, and there's about two amps flow in there. Let's take this apart and separate these up. I've got a little over two amps. What have I got here? Over three. I got it over four amps flowing now. So more current flowing must mean that the magnetic field is not as strong anymore. And so part of that is that the flux lines are going down their little highway on the, on the core this way and up here. But here they have to go across the air. And they don't travel as well across the air. So it's less efficient. It's also partly this is pushed out further away. But it's this concept of the flux lines. We want a core material that is both permeable and is nice and tight and closed in there. And we'll tighten that up. And we should be back down to our couple of amps right there. Another thing I want to show you with this transformer is that uh, the way I built this, I put some gaps in here. If I turn it, hopefully you see the gaps, a couple of wraps and then a gap in there, an air gap. And we'll see that in some of our transformers around the buildings. We're going from 480 down to 120, 208. Here, we'll turn that off. Um, or whatever voltages you're using. And you'll see that where the wraps in there have an air gap in between them. Why? Well, this one got warm. Obviously, it has a lot more amperage than this. But as we start adding a secondary and putting loads on, the current through this uh, primary will start to increase. We'll explain all that later. But with these gaps in here, if the wires get warm from the current, that'll heat up the air in between and that air will rise, hot air rises, and then we'll go out the uh, vent openings in the side of my transformer and will be replaced with cooler air coming up through the bottom. Now, could I put a fan down here and blow cool air through there? Sure, keep the wire cooler. That's one way to increase the power rating of a transformer. Get into that later. But, uh, but you say, well, what about the transformers I've seen them where the wire is just wrapped tight around the core? Well, there the engineers have calculated out um, how much current they expect to be flowing uh, in that wire, what the temperature rise, right? How much, how much hotter will it get? Uh, and can the wire, its insulation and the core handle that temperature? Sure, that's what they calculate out. So if you use it beyond its rating, then you're gonna start overheating any, any transformer. So I wanna show you something about uh, cooling in the code, or rather ventilation. Couple points I want to make here, just quickly on uh, 450.9 on ventilation. Now, there's one sentence here. I'll let you read it later on your own. But is that the all there is to this section? Because it jumps to the informational notes. Well, one of the lessons here is you're never done with a code section until you get to the next one, because there's three more important sentences down below. These info notes apply up here, or if you have exceptions, always read through till you get to the next section. And this last section is highlighted, meaning it was added in the 2020 code. It tells me that even if my transformer enclosure, the metal around it, is flat on top, I'm not allowed to store anything on top. Well, why? Well, by their nature, transformers vibrate, and something will vibrate and vibrate off. It may get wedged between the wall and the transformer. It could block one of the ventilation openings. So the hot air, not as much of the hot air will be able to escape and it'll get hotter and hotter in that chamber and uh, you'll, you'll break down your transformer sooner. Okay, well, there we have it, the importance of cooling and a couple things about how the core of a transformer works. Next video, I'm gonna start putting uh, wires around the outside, the secondary wires, and see what we're using that magnetic field for. Thank you.